since the 90s, since we started working with women, refugee women and children and refugee women, we start seeing some of the signs and the forms of human trafficking. Women were coming and claiming refugee here. In 2002, when the Canadian government signed the Convention of a, against Human Trafficking with the Palermo Protocol, we start looking how we can support and how we can learn about anti human trafficking. As we were looking on that and learning, we start seeing that human trafficking is not only sexual exploitation, it's any forms of exploitation to a human being. We start looking at the migrant workers that they were coming for years and years to Canada to work on the agricultural service and if the farmer were not happy with them, they were put it in a in a blacklist. Then we start seeing that people that is with precarious migration working in construction, that they were suffering injuries and they were not having access to support. And when you start seeing that they were hiding in the construction people, that they were in a way to pay less, less than the minimum wage. We start doing some building capacity with the community in a way that we can start building a network, a network where we can support not just domestic cases, means Canadian born or indigenous people born in Canada, but also people who was coming to Canada either as a student and then they were trafficked here in Canada. Uh, with that, in 2012, we started a network, which is the Toronto uh, Counter Human Trafficking Network. Since 2017, we started our mobile, the Migrant Workers Program, and we were going to the farms, going to the communities in the rural, remote areas, and now we have in the, the, our project that is a program, is a full program. And we start with a youth alliance. All together they can learn and they can give the information and building capacity in a way that they can protect themselves. Also, we have a, a program that is the Women's Anti-Human Trafficking Alliance. That is women that they are over 25, that they have been suffering even sexual exploitation or labor exploitation, they can get together and to start teaching to the social services what are the gaps and how they prefer that we can provide the services. Part of my role here is to uh, coordinate the Toronto Counter Human Trafficking Network. That is, a, I will say, one of the most important coalitions in the country, uh, uh, composed of up to 25 organizations. Uh, we provide leadership, but also uh, we contribute to the partnership, collaboration, and to share about best practices. What we bring to the network is also the perspective on uh, international cases and human trafficking for labor exploitation. Part of my role here also is to coordinate the Migrant Workers Mobile Program, which is an initiative that in which we bring a um, holistic service approach to rural remote areas. Uh, also, we work with construction workers, um, workers in the hospitality sector, in caregivers, um, factory workers processing food, those who are in, uh, in areas where the services uh, uh, there are lack of services or lack of information. Also, uh, I'm part of the CCR, the Canadian Council of Refugees, uh, uh, and we come to the FCG Refugee Center, bringing uh, our leadership and presence in the uh, Migrant Workers Committee and the Anti-Human Trafficking Committee, and, and also I'm co-chair of the Immigration Settlement Working Group, in which the FCG uh, contributes to, uh, not only with the coordination, but to bring in the perspective and the intersectionalities that affect uh, migrant workers, uh, refugees, uh, and particularly workers who are out of the status facing labor exploitation, labor abuses, and human trafficking in the country. We work with different groups of migrant workers from English-speaking Caribbean, Mexico, Central America, Brazil, the Philippines, and we help them with immigration remedies to regularize their status 
so they can continue to work here in Canada safely after having experienced exploitation and abuse by their former employers. Uh, we at FCJ, we work together in collaboration, but we also work in collaboration with other stakeholders in the community. We really believe in the importance of advocating for our clients, and this includes communicating with the CBSA, IRCC, local police, and RCMP. It's important for us to keep um, these relations open and communication open so we can advocate for our, the needs of our clients and how we can address the systemic issues that impact their journeys in Canada. We also partner with local colleges such as George Brown, Seneca, York University, uh, Humber, and uh, Osgoode to be able to offer student placements so that there is an opportunity for students to learn and support us with case management. As a former student myself, I can attest to the great learning opportunity that FCJ does offer on our team. Part of the work we do here is uh, uh, we collect database about the situation of human trafficking and labor exploitation in the country. Um, and we brought this information to the coalitions we work with, like the Migrant Rights Network and the CCR, in which we bring the uh, activities uh, uh, in favor of uh, policy change. My role primarily here is to support on casework on the anti-human trafficking team as well as support the Youth Alliance Against Human Trafficking. This is a wraparound project that provides support for youth that are at risk or in conditions of human trafficking. Uh, we currently have a steering committee that involves a lot of different organizations. The steering com committee informs and develops the project um, as well as include the different voices of youth. Um, so the work that I primarily do is focused on supporting our survivors, um, our migrant women who are survivors of human trafficking, whether it be sex trafficking or labor trafficking. Aside from that, I also look, work with women who are um, considered at risk. I think a big part of our program, like all programs at FCJ, is that we really provide the holistic services and that we provide wraparound supports to the women, whether it be immigration, housing, or mental health supports. Um, and another huge focus of the project is that we really want to bring the voices and the lived experiences of the women to the forefront and really highlight those experiences. And a way that we do that is that we have a steering committee composed of seven women with lived experience. Um, and in that steering committee, the women really help to inform the project, give their feedback as well. We also have a women's group, which we run for um, migrant women. And in the group, it's a chance to build community, also to have their voices heard, and a chance to showcase their resilience.